And uh, here we are again. We're on, on the way up. Uh, I think what happened this year is quite significant. It happened that the Bitcoin moved up during a risk-off, a very important risk-off moment, the regional bank crisis in March. It went from 19,000. Uh, this, this is a long-term chart, so you, I'm, what I'm telling you is... Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Kathy Wood discuss about Bitcoin and other crypto. According to Kathy Wood, this is a long-term chart showing the history of Bitcoin. As you can see, we have essentially been in a bold market with higher lows since its inception, and now we are once again on the rise. However, what Kathy Wood believes happened this year is quite significant as it happened that the Bitcoin moved up during a risk of a very important risk of moment, the regional bank crisis in March. What Cathy Wood is telling is that in inter-intraday trading, it hit a low during that regional bank crisis at 19,000 and shot up to 30,000. Why was that? She asks. Because there is no counterparty risk involved. She believes that more people are starting to realize that this is not a flight to safety and lots of things Kathy would discuss. So please watch the video to end and like, share, subscribe our channel, Everyday Finance. Thanks. Uh, and I'll end uh, on one last note, Bitcoin. So here's its history, most of its history. And uh, you can see we have been in effectively a bull market with uh, higher lows since, uh, uh, since its inception. And uh, here we are again, we're on, on the way up. Uh, I think what happened this year is quite significant. It happened that the Bitcoin moved up during a risk off, a very important risk off moment, the regional bank crisis in March. It went from 19,000. Uh, this, this is a long-term chart. So you, I'm, what I'm telling you is an in, inter, intraday. It, it hit a low during that regional bank crisis uh, at 19,000 and shot up to 30,000. Uh, why was that? Flight to quality, as Larry Fink would say. Flight to quality, as we would say. Uh, flight to safety, as we would say. Because there is no counterparty risk here. Uh, in this decentralized, transparent uh, monetary system, unlike what happened to the fiat monetary system in 0809. And I think more people are beginning to understand that this is not just a risk on asset. When the markets are feeling really good, Bitcoin tends to do very well. But can you believe it's also a risk off vehicle and more and more investors, including institutions, are beginning to understand this. According to Kathy Wood, there are two indexes related to metals. The metal index divided by the gold price index and the metal price index divided by the gold price index. This reveals a significant disparity recently, as indicated by the downward trend of metal prices relative to gold. This suggests that the purchasing power of gold is increasing, indicating the absence of an inflationary environment. In contrast, during the early 2000s, following the tech and telecom bust and subsequent recovery, the monetary policy was exceptionally accommodating for three reasons. Firstly, the Russian default triggered the bankruptcy of long-term capital management, which posed a threat to the US financial system. Secondly, the Y2K issue emerged as a concern. During the late 1990s, there was a significant increase in the stock market, commonly referred to as the Bode Large phenomenon. In response to concerns about potential economic disruptions during the transition into the new millennium, the Federal Reserve implemented preemptive measures to stimulate the economy. This was necessary because many computer systems at the time only recognized the last two digits of the year, leading to the possibility of misinterpretation as the year 1900. Consequently, there was widespread apprehension regarding the potential consequences of this technological limitation. The effects of these concerns took some time to materialize due to subsequent events such as the tech and telecom bust and an economic recession. However, it is believed that the latent monetary easing measures implemented during that period contributed to a particular indicator, 
namely the relative increase in metal prices compared to gold prices. This observation has been noted by Cathy Wood, who suggests that the manifestation of these effects was delayed, but eventually became evident. This is uh, metals, these are two indexes, metal index divided by the, these are prices, metal price index divided by the gold price index. Uh, so you can see a big disconnect uh, recently. Um, the green line is telling us that metal prices are going down relative to gold. The purchasing power of gold is going up. Uh, that, that, says, that says we do not have an inflationary situation here. Uh, in contrast, what you see in the early 2000s uh, during the tech and telecom uh, bust and then the recovery, the ensuing recovery, what happened then was the vestiges of what happened in the late uh, 90s. Monetary policy was extremely easy. Why? Um, three reasons. Uh, there was the Russian default, which triggered the, which was part of the reason long-term capital management um, went bankrupt and threatened the financial system here in the United States. And then the Y2K issue uh, became an issue. Uh, 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 the issue loomed large in the late 90s. And so the Fed did some preemptive easing in order to prevent the economy from shutting down when we moved into the new millennium. Most of the dates in computers used only the last two digits. So uh, 1998 was 98 or 99. And then, oh, oh, and all the computers would think we're going back into 1900, 1900. Uh, and so there was great fear back then. And I think it took a while to manifest because we were, went into the tech and telecom bust here and a recession. But that latent monetary easing got into this indicator. This was metal prices re rising relative to gold prices. Um, they shot up. Gold lost a lot of pur purchasing power. That was an inflationary situation and the Fed was tightening against it. And then, of course, we ended in the mortgage crisis and the, the great uh, financial crisis uh, or in the great global crisis because uh, the, the reverberations were felt throughout the world. Uh, everyone around the world owned AAA treasury securities, which had some prime, subprime mortgages in them. So um, you can see how closely since then they have mirrored one another until now. What is this? This is the Fed taking interest rates up 22 fold uh, in little more than a year's time. And what this is saying is this is a deflationary signal. It's at least disinflationary. This, this suggests to us that these long-term interest rates are going to drop fairly significantly as we enter a harder than expected landing and that they could drop below 2%. We're not saying that they will, it's not a perfect correlation here, but that's what this suggests unless there's a very big reversal in metal prices relative to gold. So this is innovation at its best, and um, it is one of the five major innovation platforms around which we have centered our research. So robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain technology, and finally multi-omics uh, multi sequencing. And this is the innovation platform we want to focus on a little bit today. The miracles coming out of this, uh, this source of innovation. A year ago, just at about this time, a young girl named Alyssa in the UK was cured after being in, on her deathbed hospice, Hail Mary Pass, in May of that year. By November, she was cured. And we think she still is cured. We'd have heard if she weren't, let's put it that way. Um, and this was of a rare form of leukemia. And the cure was gene editing, base editing. Uh, and what happened last year? We, in the innovation world, were all over it. We were so excited. 
And I called Allie er Ehrman, who is our lead therapeutics analyst, and said to her, she was at the hematology conference where there was apparently, I think they call it a poster. And um, I, I asked her, I called her at the, the conference and I said, Allie, is everybody all over this? And she said, no, no one's talking about it. I said, are you kidding me? And the investment world didn't focus on it. And you, if you remember last year at this time, we were in a horrendous bear market for innovation. The, the market may have bottomed in October, but innovation did not bottom until December.